my fellow freedom builders and welcome back to the channel. Yesterday I made a video about my swing trading paper trade portfolio that was up 200% in five months, which is quite amazing. And I promised you that I would show you some candidates today that there are sort of the stocks that could find their way into this kind of portfolio if it hadn't already been filled up and completely leveraged up. So today we're going to have a look at four new potential swing trading candidates. One of them I actually have in my own short term US portfolio that I trade with real money. But I'll show you that one. That is the last one. I have had that in there for a while, I must admit, but it is still a potential buy. So let's have a look at it. Uh, also today, I'll both be looking at, of course, the trading view. That is my main tool when I do my technical analysis. There's a link to it below here. They have a fantastic free version. So uh, please go ahead and try that one. And it is free forever. And then they have some different paid versions, but you can look all of that up on the website. Then of course, I'm going to have a look at the uh, Stockopedia. But also today, I'm going to have a look at the Market Smith. As you might remember, I'm doing a test of the Market Smith. And of course, all of the stocks that I look through, I also take them through the Market Smith kind of to see how they are doing in there and if this is a tool I can actually use for something. So first of all, let's have a look at the four stocks. The first one is Arcosa with the ticker symbol ACA. Now, as you can see, it is on a weekly trend here on a, in a very good trend. It is not like I'm looking at the weekly trend too much when I uh, when I use these uh, swing trading strategies, but sometimes I um, it is a disqualification for a stock if on a weekly chart we can see a ton of earlier tops just around the level they are at here. But um, it is just to make sure we are not buying straight into something really crazy historical uh, resistance here. But I'm looking mostly at the daily chart. And as you can see, it has been a bit bumpy uh, for a long ride. It has been going sideways here, shooting upwards, going down here, and then not bouncing from the 20 SMA, but from the 50, I must admit. But it has been going up nicely. It has ha uh, found a bit of support here on the daily chart and been shooting upwards from here with some reasonable volume. So not bad at all. If we are looking at it here in Stockopedia, there's also a link to that below. We can see it has a stock rank of 88. And um, yeah, well, there's not much to say down here. It has a reasonable earnings per share. With the swing trades, I'm not looking for something that can last for years and years and decades. I'm just looking for, to make sure that the company is not just about to go bankrupt or something like that. As you can see, it has a reasonable Petrovsky score at six. Uh, the um, the Altman C is reasonable as well. Free cash flow uh, has been going up very nicely. We do like to see that. They have some money to grow with. The working capital is reasonable. The net debt is not completely crazy and they are able to pay their interest rate. So it's not really something to be worried about. The analysts are saying buy or strong buy here. So the ACA here, the Arcosa, might be something you might consider. Remember, always to do your own research. I'm not recommending this. Um, just if you don't know the company, uh, it is focused on manufacturing and producing infrastructure related products and services. You can look it up for yourself here, but you can see construction products group. Uh, that is some of the, they have some uh, different segments here, transportation products and so on. So they are doing a lot of the products uh, in infrastructure related products here. So that is, uh, you can say kind of a, a heavy uh, industry. Maybe this is not one of the biggest stock, not, not at all, but they are in a good trend and the fundamentals are not completely scary. If we look it up here at Market Smith, uh, you can see the same here. We can see they have had a lot of uh, quarters here with some reasonable growth in the earnings per share. Last one, it was uh, 0% here and the next earnings per share is due in nine days. So that is uh, some good information here if you don't want to buy straight into the earnings. When we look at the the, um, the the institutional ownerships here, it's actually a nice feature, I must say, with the market smith. You can easily see they have 59% uh, uh, owned by funds. 
you can see that the management is owning one percent. That is not uh, very large. Uh, some some people, some uh, companies have ten or twenty percent, but they are owning a bit. However, if you're looking at the industry here, you can see that out of 197 different industry groups, this industry that is energy alternative and other, um, they have uh, 38 stocks in this industry group. And this overall industry group is actually number one out of 197. So that is quite decent. You can see how the stock is doing within the industry group. Earnings per share rate, uh, rating, it is 13 out of 38 and so on. You can see it down here. And um, you can see the uh, it is part of uh, the energy sector. And you can see some of the other industry groups here. So it's actually quite a nice feature here with Market Smith that, uh, that I do like even though I'm still not fond of their graphical front end display here, but uh, I'll take that when I do another uh, review video about it. So that was our COSA. Let's have the next one. That was not it, sorry. It was not this one here, Schnitzer Steel. And as you can see as well on the weekly chart, it is going nicely. What we see here is first we have a very good trend here with the regression channel and then it has an accelerated trend and when that happens I usually draw a new trend line from down here because when we have these accelerations I don't like to use the same channel here because it often gets very wide and, and hard to to stay within. So um, what I do when we see a melt up you could say here an acceleration in the trend i simply draw a new trend line and we are quite reasonable placed within the trend line here you can see we are in the green zone on my long-term uh, trend strategy here if we take a look at it here in the stockopedia in the snitzer steel you can also see they have a nice 89 here on the uh, on the overall stock rank some very good ratings. It has some very nice peg ratio, meaning that we are not paying too much for future growth. However, uh, there is a bit of a thing here. Let's just see here. It has been going down on the earnings per share growth for several years, and then they are projected next year to grow 1400%. And that is why this peg ratio is going so low. But that is another thing we need to be aware of. The Petrosky score, five. That is not absolutely not terrible. Uh, we have some uh, free cash flow that has been declining. That worries me a bit. But then again, I'm not planning on holding this forever. This might be a swing of five or 10 or 20 percent. But of course, if the trend continues, I just stay in it. Uh, we can see down here that their working capital is decent. The net debt it has been dropping, going up a bit in the trailing 12 month. But overall, not something I'm really worried about where I'm thinking that I want to run away. Looking at it over here, let's see here, Schnitzer Steel. It comes right here. As you can see, uh, it has been dropping here at the earnings per share. But then last time it grew 435%. Looking at the information here, it is at 88 out of 197. So in the best half, that is okay. Um, and it is, uh, you can see the ranking within it here. It is not too bad, actually. So still um, absolutely a decent company. Let's have the f uh, third one in our little row here. And that is GSL Global Ship Lease. Now, again, a very good trend here. And again, you could choose to draw an accelerating trend channel on this one. You decide where you want to draw it from. It could be from a down uh, rounded uh, here. And uh, as you can see, it has had some really, really crazy volatility here lately. This is what I uh, used to call the GameStop crash here where it simply collapsed. But now it is up above the 20 SMA again. And it broke up here with some extremely high volume. As you can see here on the RSI, it has broken up above the 50, down just touching and then shooting off from here. And that is definitely something I do like to see. Over here at the GSL, global ship leasing, we can see 96 at the stock rank. That is very fair. 0.2 at the pack ratio. That's very nice. We can see green numbers all over. Six in Petrosky score. 
Um, now, it has been a bit in a slump on the earnings per share, but has been growing up nicely the last couple of years, and the projections are fair. We can see that the uh, free cash flow here has been going a bit down, but it looks like it is recovering a bit. Uh, the net debt has been growing, and the working capital is extremely <laughs> is extremely bumpy, uh, this graph here. But they do have working capital, and as you can see, three months ago, the uh, analyst was saying uh, some just a bit above a buy here, and now they have moved it towards the strong buy. So that's also good. They are following us in here. When we look at the market smith, the GSL, and I should say, um, as you might remember, let's just say here, GLS, of course, um, that I am not in any way affiliated with the market smith. GSL, isn't that correct? Let me just have a look. Global ship, please. Oh, it's just me and my fingers. As you can see, trend is actually quite nice. The earnings per share has been growing nice and steadily, actually, with some hefty percentages. And uh, when we look at it in here, you can see 10% is owned by funds, 18% is owned by the management, which I do like that they have some skin in the game here. The industry sector is 23 out of 197, that is very fair, and it is placed uh, fairly within this uh, industry group as well. So nothing really to complain about here. Also, definitely a candidate you can consider for a short-term swing. The last one today, is the one that I actually already have, and that is the Dorian LPG. Now, I bought it somewhere down here, around the 12 mark uh, down here, and it was very close uh, that it was very close to a sale. The only thing or the only reason I didn't sell it was this bottom here. It seemed like it was testing this bottom here, so uh, I just gave it a couple of percentage uh, lease here, and um, yeah, it turned around, and had it broken down here, I simply just uh, would have sold it. But right now, it had mo been moving up again here, get paused a couple of days, showed some good strength with reasonable volume, and um, yeah, as you can see, the RSI is well above the 50 line here. So this is absolutely one that could be a buy again. I am holding it at least to see uh, if it if there isn't any more uh, upwards moving in that when we're looking at it in here 99 on the stock rank absolutely phenomenal 0.3 on the peg ratio very nicely and as you can see price to book value 0.7 that is very nice both to, towards the industry and the market and we have the price to free cash flow 5.5 very reasonable as well uh, down here, earnings per share normalized, it has uh, stabilized, it went up in 2020, and it's expected to be just about the same over the next couple of years. Free cash, cash flow has been down in a slump, let's see, here, but uh, is up in the positive again now. The working capital looking okay, and the net debt is declining a bit, so that is very nicely. The current ratio and quick ratio are nice up. The interest coverage is a bit low, but not, nothing I'm really concerned about for a swing trade like this. Uh, the analysts are saying, okay, here, a, uh, up towards uh, a buy, strong buy here. So that is absolutely great. And if we just look at the last one over here, LPG, we can see it here that uh, they have had some huge uh, races in earnings per share here. I'm not sure why we don't have one here, but the last one was plus 11%, so that is very nice. As you can see, it is bumping up uh, nicely here and looking into the information, if we look at the uh, ownership, there's 51% uh, of uh, institutional ownership, so that's very nice. 1% on management, not extremely high, but it is okay. In the industry here, you can see this is actually in the in the worst of the four. We have 115, still just around the halfway mark, so not in the complete bottom. That is okay. And uh, we have some uh, decent, not earnings per share within the industry group. That is not nice, but the others are absolutely decent. So nothing really to be uh, scared of here when we're looking for a, a short-term swing trade. Also, here something I do like on the uh, on the market Smith is this blue line. It shows the relative strength rating towards the rest of the market, and you can see 
if that is both high but also if it is rising and um, yes it's 76 here on the relative strength rating is absolutely decent so that was the four candidates for today it was Arcosa, Snitzer Steel, Global Ship Lease and Dorian that you can consider and remember I already have Dorian so I should disclaim that but I have had that for a while and I think there is a lot more upside in that stock so have a look at them Take a look at them with your own analysis tool, do your own due diligence and uh, of course control your risk management as always that is the essential if you want to be long term profitable in the stock market. That's all for now, take care of yourself and your money out there, remember to subscribe and like and all that jazz beneath the video and uh, I'll talk to you again shortly, bye for now.